Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Lion Plays the Binding of Isaac Atreth Plus. Hey NL, how you feeling? It's a new day. How did you know that? Are you spying on me? What is this? 9 rate of fire, 2.86 damage. Putting a pin in the balloon of an idea I had last time where there's a correlation between bad rate of fire and bad damage. This time, we got good rate of fire, bad damage. It happens, you know, correlation doesn't equal causation and other things that sophomore STEM majors say to echo their professors without necessarily fully understanding why. Um, I'm feeling better. I'm like, yesterday I was 80 out of 100, today I'm like 95. Tomorrow I know I'm gonna be good. So I will still sound a little bit convalescent, and that's okay. I can finally talk about things that are not sick anecdotes. I mean, most of my anecdotes are sick with two C's and no K's. Why? We don't have to do it. You don't have to de-infinity me today. You know what? If we're gonna do this, we might as well just go for it. Take your spirit arts, take de-infinity right off the bat. I was actually hoping we would get, uh, bombs. I thought, like, first floor might have been bombs and keys. And that would have been better for us, because we have a lot of bomb and key, uh, potential up here. Tinted Rock gives us a key. Use another bomb, open the golden chest, etc, etc. No such luck. Oh my god, there's so many Tinted Rocks. I'm a little tempted. Just a little, but indeed a little tempted. To go to our shop, that'll cost us a key. We'll spend five cents to buy a bomb. We could then open a Tinted Rock, but then we'd be expecting to get, like, one Spirit Heart and maybe a key out of it. I think we say no, and we try to, uh, instead just keep the arcade dream alive. You know, it's like Michael Fassbender says in the trailer for Prometheus. I can't remember if it actually made it into the movie. It was such a trash fire. Big things have small beginnings. The first floor is where you make that decision. And those decisions, you know, it's like picking the right trajectory to, like, walk, you know? If you take the first step in the wrong direction, it's basically like you took two steps in the wrong direction because you got to take one step back in the right direction just to get back to zero. So the decisions you make on the first floor percolate out from that point onwards. That's why it's always important to get a good start, you know? Do well on your first assignment of the semester. Get the first question of your exam right. Start your road trip with the perfect track one road trip song. It just makes everything easier. Hey, could you let me get into the arcade, please? Oh my lord. Yo, that's insanely great. Our speed got one one hundredth lower. Our damage and rate of fire both improved. That is disgustingly good. We also just picked up Contract from Below, which is amazing. Blue map. I was hoping for HP, but blue map is fine. If we ever get bombs, we'll like it. Do people still make mixtapes? I have to assume that. I mean, like, I didn't make mixtapes. I made burned CDs. I was a sentimental guy when I was younger, believe it or not. Used to, like, for Christmas, birthdays, etc., etc., make you like a mixed CD. It's a very personalized gift. I'll give this a shot. D100, a little scary, but I'm, you know, not necessarily shying away from it. Also a very cheap gift, because, you know, back in the day, I don't want to necessarily implicate myself, but I'm, you know, not all of the music was necessarily legally acquired. So, uh, you know, you'd come out and you'd be like, hey, here's a gift. It's uh, essentially a CDRW full of other people's creations. And for whatever reason, people were like, wow, that's very personalized, thank you so much. Anyway, it's a different era. What do people make now? Spotify playlists? Hey girl, happy birthday, here's a Spotify playlist? I don't know, maybe it's just my uh, senescence showing. Seems a little bit less personal to me, I have no idea. Now, I have a new technique for you for playlists. I'm gonna explain it to you. Here's how you build a library of music that is gonna work for you. You're gonna love this idea. Just give me a second. I'm just thinking things through on this floor. Um, so what I do, and I've been doing this a lot as I've been biking, you make, I just wanted to hit the bingo card for that one. You make a playlist 
20 or 30 songs, right? You know, an hour and a half of music. Next month, make another one and then add your previous playlist to it in its entirety. Continue to do that. After a year, you've got like 10 hours of non-stop bangers. Every single song that comes on when you're on shuffle, you're going to lose your mind. Up in here, up in here, etc. Et you know that's on the playlist. Could you just walk into the fire, please? You know what service makes that really easy? Google Play Music. You know how you can get Google Play Music? That's right, YouTube Premium. <laughs> I'm just joking. But all of that is true. Um, excuse me, sir. Balls of steel. Hey, that was a little rude. Um, I'm not going to buy anything because there's no point to buying anything just yet. You know, it's going to get rerolled so many times. Just save your money. An arcade can give you, like, um, permanent benefits if you can ma make one of those happen instead. We only have six items right now, so there's, like, a long way to go for us to reach uh, some level of feeling okay with this run. But you know the D-Infinity. It's like we're probably set almost no matter what. For now, we're just trying to agglomerate transformations wherever possible. Don't. Nah, I'd rather have shop key, I think. All right, let's moon card out of here. Huge disappointment. We're still kind of dealing with a little technical debt here. Our D8 gave us a very poor range, which was totally fine. It ranges, unless you end up with a horrible range stat, it tends to be one of the least uh, important stats you could ever have. But it is pretty bad right now, so we kind of are trying to up it, if at all possible. For now, we just got a lot of HP. But if you're going to reroll into any stat, HP is actually a really good one to reroll into, because it's one of the few that doesn't... Uh, you know, hinge on your next reroll. You know, if we have 10 HP right now, which we do, we're gonna have 10 HP at least on our next reroll unless we get an item that takes HP away, like nine lives, for example. But then we'll have nine lives and we'll be very happy about it as a result. Anyway, you get the idea here. That upped our range stat, but our tier stat's in a, a bad place. I don't know, like, I always feel the need to provide analysis consider myself the Doc Emmerich, the S Stephen A. Scott, I'm trying to think of <laughs> ESPN commentators for every single sport. I don't know Skip Bayless, you know, I see Skip Bayless on Twitter all the time. I don't follow football, but I always see him, he's talking about stuff like, hey, this guy did something on Instagram, he's a punk, he's got no place in the league. Back in my day, the league consisted exclusively World War II era veterans that had respect. Today's day and age is just a bunch of hunks. I don't know what I'm talking about. Hey, mister. Back off, get your own sandwich. But it's hard to provide analysis on a D Infinity run, you know? Because. It's like, the result is not assured, but it's pretty close. But the way that you get there is constantly in flux and as a result, irrelevant. It's like a human life, you know? It's gonna end in the same location, even if the sun may rise in the east, it settles in a final location. I don't want any of this. So I'm constantly finding myself being like, well, we don't have the tools we need to succeed, but it doesn't matter, because, like, at some point, we will. You know, we'll get that guppy transformation, we'll get that spun transformation, which is probably the one we're closest to right now, and everything's gonna, gonna fall in line. I really do, does anyone out there still do, like, uh, Isaac quantitative analysis? Because I got a real, I got a null hypothesis for you, okay? My null hypothesis is that, um... Our proportion of runs with deals with the devil has stayed the same. You know why that's our null hypothesis? Because what I want to test is why the heck have we gotten so many freaking deal with the angel runs lately? So many runs over the past, like, two weeks 
have been Red Chest, First Floor, Deal with the Devils. First Deal with the Devil, Red Chest, I should say, not First Floor. Um, or Guppy, or not Guppy, okay, start over from zero. So many times recently we've gotten deals with the Angel in my thesis here. Krampus has shown up on those second floor deal with the devils all the time. If not Krampus, Red Chess. If not Red Chess, just the terrible choice of uh, items. This is gonna hurt. Yeah, there goes our... Well, no, our deal with the devil chance isn't gone. Just our eternal heart. Which is, again, fairly irrelevant. So if you're still out there, you know, it's summer vacation for, for most of you, probably. If you're still in school. If you're at... Uh, a job, well then that, I, I just reminded you that there was a time in your life where there was such a thing as summer vacation and it probably contributed to a certain sense of existential anyway, so I apologize for that. Summer vacation is a cruel joke. You ever feel like maybe uh, child welfare laws have gone too far? <laughs> where, I don't even know what I'm getting hit by at this point. I know we have Midas Touch, so I keep freezing enemies right next to me, but I don't even know they exist. Obviously, I don't actually think that child welfare laws have gone too far. But maybe kids do have it a little too easy. All I'm saying is we get them used to this idea that the months between, you know, July and September are for, for just hanging out and playing video games. And then once the, you know, they hit 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, somewhere in there, I'm just going to go for it. We yank it away from them and we say, hope you didn't enjoy it, because you're never going to see it again. You know the expression, youth is wasted on the young? I don't like this expression, because uh, it rings too true. I want an idiom that doesn't make me feel bad, and this is not one of them. But it's true, you know, it's like uh, the Counting Crows or Joni Mitchell said, depending on your perspective. Don't it always seem to go, you don't know what you got till it's gone. I never appreciated summer vacation. Summer vacation for me, as a kid, and I don't know if you guys can relate, but it was like one week of being thrilled that it was summer vacation, I didn't have to go to school, played a lot of video games, and then like... Dude, with D-Infinity, we totally want AAA battery. And then like... Seven weeks of me just playing the same video games over and over and over until I was bored. It was an extreme waste of my own time. Well, don't forget that one week of like, this summer vacation, I'm gonna get totally jacked. So when I come back to school in September, nobody's gonna recognize me. And they're gonna be like, how'd you get so jacked? And then like, I'll start it next month. And then a month later being like, ah, maybe next year. And then a year later being like, ah, it's too late now. This is my body forever. Too real? Maybe too real. We have eight range. I'm normally not the biggest fan of range in the first place. Excuse me, could you please just frig off? I'm normally not the biggest fan of range to begin with, but eight range is just horrible. Actually like a terrible stat. I think I'm gonna be like that, even in my like 60s. You know, I to pull the veil back a little bit. I was in like really good shape, basically from like 11th grade until my second year of university, and then I sort of like let it slip. And every ever since then, you know, I know the keys to get back to decent shape. You you know, watch your macronutrient breakdown. It's very simple, you know, the tools, it's not like an eldritch science. Work out, eat right, pretty much is what it comes down to. There's no, it doesn't have to get any more complicated than that, necessarily. Oh man, that's not a good first transformation. Give me a battery charge. Oh, we have a battery charge. One rate of fire, we have soy milk, okay. That's what's happening. Ever since then, I've just been like, is this the year? And then it has not been the year. What is this... This is horrible. That is good. Except for Isaac's heart. Is that a chaos card? Ancient recall? I'm, I'm willing to give it a shot at least. Yeah, just walk right into it. Good idea. Ever since then, I've been like, is this the year? 
28, nope. 29, nope. Well, yeah, there's still a little bit of time left. I'm gonna be like 70 years old and be like, this is the year. <laughs> time to finally get jacked again. And then I'm gonna be like, ooh, is that <laughs> free popcorn in the seniors lounge? Maybe it's 72, see you next year. In my defense, doctor, there was free popcorn. Oh, okay. Fair enough. People say, like, nothing tastes as good as, like, healthy feels. I understand, you know, you, when you're healthy, you do feel better. Take it from somebody who's been on both sides of the spectrum and is recovering from a recent illness. But there are many things that taste like as good as healthy feels right now. The problem is that... Actually, so I was watching, there's a good analogy for this. I was watching the documentary on Chris Farley's life called I Am Chris Farley. And by the way, I don't I, I don't have like body dysmorphic disorder. And no, no offense to anybody who does. I, I know I'm not like in awful shape. I'm just saying, you know, could be better. Don't take this as like the start of an eating disorder or something like that. Just because I know people worry and they should, maybe, but not about me. And they were like, you know, so Tom Arnold was talking. Tom Arnold, if you if you're not familiar, Hollywood actor, comedian, uh, who you know he's had his struggles with both weight and I think alcohol over the course of his life. But anyway, he was like, take it from a former fat guy. When you're an alcoholic, you know, if you don't drink for a day, you're sober. But if you have like bad eating habits and exercise. You could follow, like, the proper regime, and it would still take you a long time to see results, you know? It's like you can't really see the payoff. And that's why, like, brownies are delicious right now. Not eating a brownie feels good in six months. That's the problem. Being healthy, you know, it's really got to work on its immediate value proposition. So I can't wait for, like, computer chips in the brain, you know? that make not eating a brownie feel better than eating a brownie immediately, and then you get the benefit at the end anyway. Thereby completely removing the necessary element of discipline, short-circuiting the human uh, reward system, and probably contributing to us becoming, you know, exactly the model of humanity expressed in the 2008 Pixar film WALL-E, but I digress. I don't know where this run is right now. It's a drift. We need to triangulate the signal if possible. I'm not worried about getting deals with the devil, by the way. And so I'm gonna go to this curse room. The reason I don't care about deals with the devil is because they stink. Oh, we can fly now. We must have Beelzebub. I didn't pay attention to that, but that's good to know. Why do we have Beelzebub? Well, we're flying, basically. It might not be, it might be Leviathan. I have no idea. Um, or Seraphim, but we haven't gotten Angel deals. We need to reroll our run, continue trying the... Ooh, interesting. Trying to get to these, uh, like, wombo combo potentials. I'm just a little disappointed that our stats are not bringing it right now. This is a good opportunity for us, actually. I think we should wait till we get a reroll, which could happen as soon as, like, right now. Nope. Uh, we do want to reroll that, so just give it a second. I have a path. Shouldn't have taken that yet. Especially because we added identified. And you're going to know why we shouldn't have taken it once I give you my strategy. Because we have Dark Judas, we're going to wait till we get a full run reroll. Then we're going to lose all of our HP. Respawn as Dark Judas, get double damage permanently. And the reroll is going to insulate us from the fact that we only have 2 HP when we respawn. Yeah, so this is the perfect moment. Alright. This could be the start of something beautiful on this run. Because it has been kind of slow so far. Not bad, necessarily. Just slow. Oh, good. We extinguished the fire. It's going to take a minute. Wonderful. Uh, okay, I'll blow myself up. gonna take a second just accept it by the way not necessarily a good strategy but I'm gonna stand by this 
as paying dividends later. Okay, so we're Dark Judas. Damage stat is great. Reroll the whole run. Damage stat is even better. Oh my god. Four rate of fire. I don't think we really care about Diplopia. Four rate of fire. 26 damage. And we have Jacob's Ladder. This might be the kind of run we can stick with. It's a little unzany to stick with this run. But is it? I don't know. We did... Uh, we kind of did some Zane, wouldn't you say? Like, we went for it. Rarely do you get a chance to anchor a run like this in um, some kind of zany strat. You know, it's I always talk about the D-Infinity. Like, it, it has so much innate Zane that it's Zaneless. And I think people oftentimes misinterpret what I mean when I say that. But it, it, let me put it this way. What's funnier? When your friend who is mentally unhinged does something unexpected? Or when your friend who is totally like, you know, button up, fly straight ahead, does something insane? In college, I lived with a guy who was devoutly religious. He's a great guy, by the way. Again, is not coming from the perspective of like judging him. You know, when we would go out and, and misbehave, he would stay home and play Ogre Battle 64. And he's a good dude. He knew what he wanted in life. He drew his own sprites in MS Paint for Super Nintendo games, okay? He's a good guy. When one of my uh, other housemates would be like, I got into trouble last night by doing this thing, we'd be like, that's funny. And also very much in keeping with your behavior. One time, in like our fourth year of college, he came home after having been at like a, a party for his engineering group or something like that and he had had two glasses of wine and was all red faced and laughing and I was like this is the greatest moment of my entire life so for him to have misbehaved was more noteworthy and that's my philosophy of Zane it's all informed by that oh joker me dad if you misbehave all the time it's less funny than if you normally behave well. Like for Nick to say something incredibly offensive on the NLSS would be way funnier than if Rob said it. Now I appreciate that Rob's there to fall on that sword most of the times because that's what you need for the dynamic. But Nick could really bring the house down if he wanted to is all I'm trying to suggest. Now, are we going to reroll this run? You know me, I probably will. But I would really like to just enjoy this for, like, maybe the entirety of the rest of the run until the, the cathedral. Is that fair? Like, we were in some, uh... Oh, everything's free now? We should totally go to the hush fight. Maybe, like, I'll roll this until the hush fight then. And after the hush fight, we can get into some, some funky stuff. Do we have restock? I guess there's no way for us to have known without having paid close attention to, like, absolutely every item we've ever had, which is, uh, not impossible, probably, but, but certainly overkill. Uh, like, this is an extremely powerful run, and I am an extremely big idiot for taking damage there. Oh, yeah, let's, I, I forgot what's in that room for the fourth time. Let's go check it out. Oh, is the shovel? No, thank you. And Curse of the Labyrinth means we will definitely make it to our hush fight. I'm going to blow you up for better deal with the devil optics. I don't have any more stories about that guy. None that I'm willing to share. He's a good dude. I haven't spoken... Dude, like... I, uh, I lived with this guy for four years. I have not spoken with him since we graduated. I, I, there's a lot of disposable friendships that happen at that era of your life. You know, sometimes, uh, when I was home, my mom always asked me, because, you know, I, I went to the same school district for my entire life. And she's like, do you still talk to anybody from, like, public school or high school? And I'm like, I talk to Malf. I don't call him Malf to her, because she's not familiar with the parlance, but... I talk to Malf, and then I have another friend that I talk to, but we don't talk that much because he has two kids, so he's living like a different lifestyle than I am right now, which is fine. You know, we're still, you know, friends till the end. 
But apart from that, not really. I'm jealous of people with, uh, you know, long-lasting, lifelong friendships. I'm more of like a... Apparently, I'm a hit-it-and-quit-it sort of guy. I didn't realize. Do we have restock? No. That is a bummer. Can we restock somehow? No. Also a bummer, really. You ever think about, like, how, uh... How much of, like, who becomes your friend is influenced by things that are totally outside of your control? Let me give you an example, okay? First off, you know, who are you most likely to be friends with when you're younger? Classmates. So they have to live in close geographical proximity to you to even qualify for that in the first place. Secondarily, oh, we have Epiphora, so continue to shoot in this direction, please. Dude, one rate of fire, 34 damage. This is insane. Secondly, you know, they, I mean, other things are relevant, but they have to speak the same language for the most part, I would assume. The internet has changed this slightly, I guess, but I think about that sometimes because I'm like, man, in college I had like the best friends I've ever had in my entire life, more or less. And then I thought about it and I was like, who did I live with? Like six people who happened to live on my floor when I was in the dorms in freshman year. Would I have had the same kind of experience? I lived on floor four instead of floor two? I don't know. I always looked at floor four as like, those are some smug jerks up there. Up on the top of, you know, McNeil Hall. It's interesting to think of how like, you know, the butterfly effect of your life would have been different. You know, what if I had lived on a floor that was predominantly musicians instead of engineers? Would that have changed my sense of humor? Would I have gone down to floor two to hang out with the engineers so I could be the village idiot in their conversations? Or would I have stayed up there with the musicians? Maybe I'd be working at a record store now or something like that. What if I'd been born in a slightly different postal code? Who knows? You know, the butterfly effect of your life. So much of it is, you know, if not determined, at least influenced by, uh, you know, where you started. Okay, this... I, I promised you that I would start the re-rolls. And I'm happy I did. We can still be hit by explosions, so fear that. Dude, it's like the only time I've ever seen the mom transformation do something worthwhile. It's not the mom transformation even, it's... It's just Taurus, isn't it? I'm an idiot. I don't really... By the way, it's not like that bothers me, like... It, I'm not here like, I'm not treating you like a, a psychologist or something like that. I'm more just like, it's kind of interesting to think about is my perspective. I'm at, oh, what is this? I'm happy with the way things have worked out for me and uh, I, I, you know, if you were like, hey, we could give you, uh, oh my lord. We could give you the opportunity to change, like, one little thing in your upbringing and see how it turned out. Would you like to do it? Nah. You know, I, I could understand I'm not going to begrudge you if you take that decision. But for me, I think I, I honestly kind of got the high roll on what I would have expected my life to be. So I'm, I'm not going to mess with that. It's going to, you ever see Bedazzled? You know, it's, it's the same exact thing. Brendan Fraser was like, my life's okay, but I want to date this girl and she doesn't know I exist. And then he's like, yeah, Satan, I'll give you my soul in exchange for an opportunity to impress her. Not a smart move, Brandon. We'll probably get Bookworm here. I guess we haven't gotten spacebar items, so no, we're not going to get Bookworm here. This run is amazing, though. What's our luck stat? Negative, and yet we still got a chest here. That's unlikely. It's just, you know, it really makes you think. It's the kind of thing you think about. You know, when you're in your freshman dorm. What if instead of being placed in this uh, this building, I got placed in that building? What if instead of being in Mrs. Sears' class in grade 2, I was in Mr. Jenkins' class in grade 2? You know, that kind of stuff, it has a knock-on effect. I think, at least. But I don't really know what I'm talking about. To be honest with you, I think, like, the D100 has influenced my brain... And I'm kind of like being 
like my brain is being rerolled constantly here. Because I haven't found a place to anchor myself on this run ever. Luckily, the run turned out pretty well. But, you know, it's the kind of stuff you think about. Kate and I are getting older. Probably won't have a kid for like... You know, I mean, this presumption was assuming we're even able. My parents dropped that on me when we were back there. They were like, when, when do you guys think, you know, you would have a child? They're not putting too much pressure on us, but my mom is kind of like... She's, she's been making jokes about having a grandchild for like three or four years. And now she's like, these are jokes and you can live your life however you want. But at the same time, there's a little bit of truth behind every joke. And I'm like, I know, I've just been choosing to ignore it. Um, but they're like, you know, when would you think you'd have a kid? And we were like, I don't know, maybe like three or four years. And then they were like, well, first you got to make sure you even can. And I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> It's that you're supposed to be like the rock in my life. You're not supposed to sow seeds of dissent like, Hey son, better make sure you're not shooting blanks before you start making big plans. It's kind of a, an overly uh, aggressive tone of conversation to have here. It's like my parents have started daring me to have a child. They're like, do it, you won't. Nobody tells me what I, what I won't do. And you start to think about that stuff because you're like, you know, is this the kind of neighborhood you want to raise a child in? Is the school district good? Are they going to get yelled at by people on the street on a regular basis? Just shouting horrible delusions? Anyway, we'll talk about that in the next episode. For now, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. I will see you next time.